Cool. So um, uh, I'm Mac. Uh, I, I lead the quality engineering department, and we have on the call Vinci and Joanna. Vinci is the quality engineering manager for, for growth, and Joanna is the quality engineering manager for, for ops and CICD. So this meeting is about a run through of um, the overall project management process that we have here at GitLab, and um, just to provide more materials into the onboarding process for our department. Uh, we, we are going over two main pages. One is the project management page, which splits all the projects, and also one more for roadmaps. Um, now this page, I set it up uh, uh, almost a year already. So it could use feedback on, on, how, we, on, 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 on how we can do things better. What I did was I essentially list all the projects and then um, showcase the default boards that I've set up for for those, um, uh, let's call them legacy teams of the team that already have managers at this point. And then I'll leave it to each manager if they want to improve on this or have their own boards, have, have additional, it's totally up, 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 to, up to the managers to do this. Uh, so let's start with um, the list. Let's go, let's go straight down. Uh, the first one on this list is under, um, this is the, the group, so if it's, most of our projects is not all are under GitLab.org. So when you go to GitLab.com, uh, under GitLab.com, there's a GitLab.org. This, this group is essentially um, where all our work is stored. The GitLab QA project is essentially um, the runner orchestrator, per se. And we outsource this or we publish this to a gem called GitLab QA so that our customers can even uh, download this gem and run the tests on their GitLab instances. Hence, it is a separate project. A lot of people confuse this with the QA project, and um, we've done a lot of cleanup where the test cases and test scenarios were put in this project. It shouldn't be. It should be in the main project. These issues should just be how to update the framework or the orchestrator. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna call it framework. It's an orchestrator. So um, with that, um, I'll open it up to questions on, on um, any, anything you'd like to ask in regarding to this project to lessen the confusion. Okay. No, I think I'm so far so, far, so, far, so good. Great. So it works in coordination with the QA project in the main repo. So this runner kind of it kicks off the test in that, in that folder. So think of it as an, as an orchestration tool. Going back to the list, um, insights, this should be removed soon. Uh, as a, a historical background, when I first started, we didn't have any dashboards. So we built one um, really fast. And this is the code that um, powers the legacy dashboard. Um, uh, and you can see the rates of bug creation. This was the first iteration of essentially the engineering metrics that is now the developer development KPI that we have today. Uh, we were the first that built this. And as you can see, um, it's really slow. So um, we are leaving it here for historical reasons, uh, likely that Kai will um, uh, execute the end of life process for this project sometime in February, because we'll be moving into Periscope and we've actually built this feature into GitLab ourselves. Um, credit to the EP team, I'll show that in a bit. But this is made clear by the banner um, that the quality dashboard will be deprecated in favor of Periscope, GitLab Insights, um, and with the deprecation plan linked here. You can actually, uh, these links are, are relatively, uh, are, are updated. But with that, we still use the issue tracker for um, some of the engineering productivity work uh, so issues are still being created here for, for some of the, um, uh, the work that Kyle's been, been, been looking at. Once we end up life, this project, uh, we, we move these issues into the, the main team task project. Let's pause there for a second and then, uh, I'll answer any questions you have. Um, just one quick question. When you say we have, uh, it's built this already within GitLab, does that mean that we're going to move away from Periscope or we're going to have both? Great question. So there's a directional issue here, um, the deprecation plan. So what we want to do is slowly switch out Periscope 
um, where we can. Let me show you what the feature looks like. So this is the deprecation plan. You can see all the, all the lists of tasks here. It's a really cool feature. Um, you can figure this at the group level and also at the project level. Uh, if you have a, a GitLab Insights YAML file, um, you can essentially configure a chart that renders uh, a very similar uh, capability here, right inside GitLab. The UI is a bit rough right now on the edges because our values of iteration. Um, it works it, to a certain degree, but it's not as, it won't be polished or perfect. Um, but the links work. You can switch dashboards and your, the URL updates so you can essentially uh, deep link charts. Um, one of the, the, the things that I think Kyle's looking at right now is uh, into end tests, trends, and failure. So we're just going to use this one. Um, uh, it can render data on merge requests and MRs um, on a time series uh, axis. That's one dimension. The other dimension are issues. So really simple issues, labels, merge requests, labels, and then you can slice the data that way. Um, there are documentation in, the, in our docs on how to configure this YAML file. Uh, let me see if um, I can point you to some, actually the access request project by the security team is actually using it pretty actively. So all the audit, all the uh, baseline access, they're using this to measure how much work is being done and et cetera. And if you look at the repository, there's a GitLab folder and there's an Insights YAML file. So for, for example, you can give, when you create a chart, give a title, what, the, what is the type of the chart? You can pick between stack bar and there's like a, 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 just a bar chart with line. Um, sorry, just bar chart, the line hasn't been implemented yet. And then you specify what labels you wanna slice and dice and then it will render, render the chart. Um, and this is what, what is being used uh, at this level. So yeah, this is really um, forward looking because this is an example of engineers in the quality department contributing to features, which is um, very different than other companies where um, maybe even the QA engineers are only writing test plans. We're not that. So um, this is a great uh, growth factor for engineers in the team as well. Questions? That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Uh, oh, cool. This is the documentation. So um, uh, when you create, create it, uh, you can render insights. And this is powerful manager. If you want something really fast to see what, are the, what, is, what is the trend for your team and all that, you can essentially use this. Um, one thing that we haven't done and we should be is measuring the, the output of our team. And uh, we might need some new labels like quality colon ops and CACD quality colon growth. Um, for you, Vinci, you might, you might have to create another project like the customer portal to see how, how many, uh, like if you want to see how many tests or how many merge requests with tests and use a label. So it's really the capability to slice and dice data is baked in to the product and is available for, for managers to, to go ahead and, and iterate how, how, which way you like. So that takes care of the, let me just close out these dashboards. Has yes, it now, is it just uh, Kai who's taking care of all this reporting or is it spread across all teams? Or is he consolidating all the reports together? Uh, yes, so uh, for the overall roll up, it's Kyle. And that's, that is um, in Periscope. The single source of truth is Periscope because that's where our execs are looking at the data. Um, our management team is looking at the data. The strategy that we would do <clears throat> is if we can have some of this data in insights, we can create an API that integrates it with Periscope. So it's, it's reflected. So the single source of truth gets pulled directly from GitLab.com through insights and we provide either an adapter or an API that Periscope can ingest and then render it there. There are charts in Periscope that are just powered by CSV files and they just upload CSV. This is kind of similar to that where um, the rendering presentation is there, but we can align on the source of data and then ensure that we dog food and, and improve our product that way. 
Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Great. Thank you. So that's it for insights. Let me close it out. And then let's go back to uh, this. GitLab Triage. Uh, this is the triage engine, which the, um, the engineers in the engineer productivity team has been working on for a long time already. This powers a lot of the bots that you see, like auto labeling issues, um, moving milestones when the milestone hole is equivalent to uh, the close, close sprint and move tickets to the next sprint, um, that type of work. This is a free tool that we open source to customers of GitLab as well. So there are customers that actually use this. It's a supplemental tool um, that, that takes care of process automation and house cleaning, for lack of a better term. So if, they, if you, if you um, uh, hear GitLab triage, this is the project that powers all that, and this is its own separate thing. There's other initiatives to actually make this a, a feature inside GitLab as well. Um, I'm going to jump to triage ops for a second because there's a, there's a difference on in, in the notation. Uh, think of this as like the infrastructure that everybody can use. It's like how you download Java or you download Node.js engine. Um, we configure it for our use here in the triage ops project. So the triage operations pulls GitLab triage as a library or a dependency. And all the rules that we have are in here, like move files. So this is, this is a usage. Um, and you can see we have logic to close report. There's things to test dry run. Ensuring that default labels are set. There's a hygiene um, test. Um, move milestones. Um, the, the triage results, triage report is being generated here. So this is our use case but this is the, the engine. So you won't see any logic here um, that is related to our use case, but it's like the, the clients, the APIs that we provide for, for users to call. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, yep. I, I shouldn't use that term. Any questions? Is it clear? It's clear. Okay, ask me questions anytime, and I will never be annoyed. If a week <laughs> from now, Mick, what is this project? Happily to answer. Um, do not be afraid to ask questions. Uh, so that takes care of the triage and triage ops. Um, oh boy, this is really out of date. Um, so before we had GitLab Community Edition and GitLab Enterprise Edition. Now, um, this has changed a lot because we have moved to a single repo. So GitLab CE has been moved slash renamed to GitLab FOSS. Uh, FOSS stands for, um, uh, I can't remember the F, but it's uh, full open source software, um, something along those lines. This is the, the code for the CE version that we publish. No work is being done here anymore. What we do is we uh, work on only one repo because there was a lot of cost in managing two different repositories when engineers had to create two MRs every time they work on a feature, like one MR for the enterprise code base, one MR for the open source code base. And there's like, if else um, in oh. between. So now, sorry, there's if else now in this code that like if enterprise license enable this code, if no license, you fall back mm -hmm. to the other piece of code. Before there was just merge conflicts everywhere and code and the same folders look different in two repos and that was detrimental to our productivity. Now it's only one repo and everything gets, gets, um, gets put in this. Um, there's code at the end of the release cycle that removes um, enterprise specific code, which is now in folders already. And it's just copied and, and pushed here for transparency reasons. If, um, if someone wants to look at the, the um, community edition of the code. Um, any questions? Um, I'm just a bit confused. Um, maybe I didn't hear you clearly. So I do understand that this is just for the the other one, not GitLab FOSS. The other one is the enterprise code base, which has all the licensing features and everything. And if there is a feature that is not required for enterprise, we put the EFL statement and we come back to this one. But if that is the case, why are we maintaining two different repos still? Or are we just trying to duplicate this one eventually? 
No, we need to provide it for transparency reasons because people run the the open source code base, right? That they install the the CE version. Mm -hmm. So in order to determine what's going wrong, or they want to see the flow of the code, this needs to be made available. Um, and there are some limitations in the in our enterprise um, uh, repo. I don't have the the issues off the top of my head right now, but if you dig through our um, blog posts on documentation mm -hmm. and the release team from the delivery team, there are, there are uh, reasons outlined there to why we're doing it this way. But that still means that if we, if we add any new features, it would still have to go through these two different repos still. Yes, but then this repo is, the process is automated. So, oh, it's okay. So there's automation that just, removes EE specific code and just like, and just push to this. And there's CI running in this project as well because we need to make sure that the, the code is working um, mm. as expected. So it's not two different module requests, it's just one process itself is automatically done. If it exactly, is exactly. So instead of like two, two expensive process going into two projects, um, yeah. the, the human effort goes into one and there's a machine cleaning, fine tuning that just copies over and put it in, the, in this repo. Okay. Yeah. That so if, good. Sorry. If someone in the community wants to make um, a change to like the open source version, mm. um, like does does that change get um, implemented into the enterprise version first and then pushed into open source w with the automated process? Like, how does that work? That is great. That's a great answer. So. Kind of show you what happens. This is essentially the triage ops. So what we do is we auto close the issue, move it to the main repo. So we just say, hey, hey folks, this project issue tracker no longer being looked at. Follow the, the new project. This is your new issue. Go there instead. And we just automate the cleanup of this. I think it's by per week. So for example, this one, it will mark as closed, moved, opened by this person. And when you click on moved, it has an exact clone of his thing. And with the comments already copied over, and you can see that this is the audit event, like post the bot, everything should happen here. And hopefully, okay, he, he came here and he added his, his comments. So um, it's, it's being notified actively. And this is triage operations in the works. What else? Cool. Uh, let's close that. And that takes care of that. We talked about triage ops already. I'm gonna look at, uh, I'm gonna show you the quality team tasks. This unfortunately has become a kitchen sink. Um, this is essentially uh, I don't want to use, um, uh, essentially this is like, Natural. yeah, this is, this is just, uh, like when you, when you have your Jira ticketing system or, um, uh, Bugzilla or whatever. So this is the task tracker for the team. Um, I'm still polishing how we can draw the line. There are some times I have to remind people, Hey, this is a cross cutting work with your counterpart team go and open in the main repo because you will get like the DevOps labels, stage labels, counterpart, bot tracking, tagging, all that stuff. Uh, this is more like it's evolved more into like internal housekeeping tasks, um, non-technical process changes that we need to discuss. Um, some framework things that needs to be done here, like, um, uh, like improved tooling. Uh, I'm leaving it, I'm, I'm giving some space for, for flexibility here. But um, yeah, it's, it can be, uh, it can be, there are improvements that we can do. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, going back to Nightly's test, I think we, we talked about this already. Oh, these are, these are already created, so I, I need to probably look into this. Um, so I think we touched on this already. Uh, Quali has a bunch of environment specific projects that is essentially the CI configuration. Think of it like a folder for your CI. And figure there's test for pre prod, test for production, test for canary, test for staging and nightlies. Uh, with the exception of nightlies, everything gets run 
in another separate ops instance. Because if GitLab com goes down, we need to ensure that the release and test process is still up and running. So the tests and CI are running in a different instance. And what, what we do is uh, the project here gets um, mirrored over to that instance. So the definition of the CI jobs are being made here. Hence, um, uh, I believe there's some, yeah. You will see merge request activities here. However, you won't see any pipeline um, uh, activities. Oh, there is. Interesting. Okay. Uh, it's probably not. One second. Oh, it's probably the roll up, meaning this is like the, um, the front and the end of the train, but the bulk of the test runs are running in, in the ops instance. Um, I'm surprised we're still running some, some, um, some pipelines here, but it's likely that these are not, um, these are not critical pipelines. Uh, so this is like a month ago, one month ago, two weeks ago. So I think it's correct. If you go to the ops instance, tests are run every like five to 10 minutes and it's really active there. And that is what you see in the QA underscore staging channel, QA underscore nightly's channel, QA underscore production. So it, it maps directly to, to, to these uh, projects. Uh, questions? Can you um, remind me again what each of the different environments are for? So there's, we have nightly staging in Canary. Um, like what state are each of those um, environments Great. in? Good question. Uh, nightly is the, the package that we ship. So the Omnibus package, Omnibus is the installer for GitLab. So nightly is just test the installation packages every, every night. And we maintain that with uh, coordination with the distribution team because they are in charge of um, making sure all the distros of GitLab are up and running. Like Suzy, Ubuntu, Windows, all the flavors that we allow users to install, um, that, is, that works hand in hand with the night lease. And uh, staging is staging. And um, so what's different at GitLab is we do not have a develop branch. We have, we merge directly to master and we enforce that testing is being done in your feature branch. Hence, we give you a review app or a test environment for every feature branch and ensure that's the case. So it gets merged directly to master and staging gets deployed, I think every day, um, multiple times a day on staging. And once deployment time comes in, um, the, the, any green, uh, when deployment window comes in, we pick the, the green deployment from staging, which we have smoke tests and soon to have full end-to-end -end tests um, regarding. Um, it gets picked and deployed to Canary. Canary is essentially a subset of production, which a number of us are, are using. And like the internal GitLab projects, they are all on Canary because we want to ensure that um, we are in the, we get the code first before it gets released to the general public and catch any edge cases there. Once um, Canary is soaked in for a while, then it gets promoted to production. And then finally the general public gets, gets um, the code base um, that's being deployed. So um, I think Canary and production are, they're the same environment, but different, different parts of the cloud, for lack of a better term. And we want to make it clear that this is running against a canary section of the cloud and then production runs against, um, runs against the rest. Does that answer the question? Yep, thanks. Cool. Uh, this list needs to be updated. Uh, known QA failures, this, is, this has been deprecated, I think. Um, oh, okay. Um, I think we changed it already. Uh, so these are the... Um, we used to have a project to document all the flaky tests. Right now we just use quality bug and then um, we, we, we label them. It's a bit of a, there's room for improvements here. I think we need to use another label for this. Like we have quality flaky test label. I think um, we should ensure that the team uses that. Um, so yeah, this is essentially 
CI pipeline bugs that we own. Any when, questions? When you say CI pipeline, you mean like test cases that have been failing in staging? Yes. Or failing in canary. Okay. Yes. Yes. And we, we have a, we have a label for it now. Uh, if you look at the, like found on staging, um, but these are not bugs in regards to the pipeline code. It's not there. Uh, but like if, if it's found on staging, we, we, we should have, um, I right. see so these are essentially things that we should be, um, should be looking into. One thing we can do as part of the improvements is ensure that these labels are added by the, by the bot on our side. If, um, if, if it's a flaky test, we should label it with um, this label. Um, body. We have this label, I think. Oops, not rendering, huh? One second. Oh, label equals quality. There we go. So, okay, it's being used, though it hasn't been recently, and most of these are closed because uh, there's no open issues. I think that's like the next iteration to ensure that the team is, um, is, uh, is documenting things clearly. And by our roadmap um, and, and the DevOps way of doing things, flaky tests is the highest priority, hence um, you see them as, as 1P1s. Um, the yeah. quarantine test are the flaky test, right? That's, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Is there a way in GitLab to actually differentiate between a defect or a bug versus a task? Or is it all under issues? And we add labels for defects. Yes, all under issues, add labels for this. Um, I've done a lot of groundwork um, to have these, to introduce these labels. I think what I need help from all the managers going forward is ensure that we um, implement it. And if there's any overhead and paperwork or red tape that we don't need like hey this label is duplicate with this let's just go ahead and remove it and align on one label for one thing not having one label say half a thing and the other say level say half a thing so these are just efficiencies that we just have to iterate as we go on um great question um, anything else um is there a place where i could go and find what are the labels that quality team actually uses <laughs> I see a lot of labels listed here. Uh, uh, yeah, um, it's a big thing. There are many places where we document this. So you can go by quality and search that. That's one way. Okay. Um, and these should be up to date, like anything that has a quality, um, this, 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 yes. Uh, the quality. So yeah, this is kind of accurate to a certain degree. Um, mm -hmm. There's also... Um, sorry, Meg, Vincy, I have to drop for another call. But okay, we'll record it. the rest of the recording. Thank you. Yeah, I'll record it. So I'm showing this page, uh, issue workflow. So there's a number of things that are listed here as well, like um, what types of labels have been used overall throughout the whole company, actually and um, master flaky um, staged labels, group labels. I've done so many iterations on this that um, uh, sometimes it can be fatigue um, uh, changing it back and forth. But for good reasons, um, we, we, we iterate all the time. Do, uh, we, the yeah. sorry. do we utilize severe 10 priority? Oh, I see priority right over there. Yes, we do. Okay, okay. Yes, we do. Um, I introduced priority. It wasn't here before. Yeah, uh, and we I think severity is something we still need to improve on, because um, yeah. um, it can mean different things in many aspects. Yeah, that is something I think we could probably have a discussion too. Uh, mm. as, an, as, a, as a quality team itself, like what are the use cases of having severity and priority? How would that should be utilized? Should that be one or the other? I believe in having both, but it's good to see what everyone thinks. Yeah, there there are a lot of um. Here's the thing. Before there was only severity and mm -hmm. there was no clear um, SLO tied to it. Well, that, that's, that's the other one. But then you need to provide a mechanism because 
uh, a P4 can be, sorry, a, a, an S3 can be a P1, depending yeah, on exactly. what the impact is, right? So um, I think GitLab as a, as a um, scheduling aspect, there's a lot more things that we could do here to make it clear. But as of now, are we utilizing both? Yes, we are. Okay, 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 that's good. Yes, we are. And who defines the priorities? Are the product owners who define the priority? Uh, correct. Product owners schedule the, the, the work. Okay. 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 Uh, going back to, the, to this. So this is project management. Um, I've set up a top level board uh, sometime, long time ago, and, and I think this has evolved so many, so many different ways now, so you can search by quality. Um, let's see, ops and CI and CD team. The top, the top level I configured here is for, for managers to see what is being scheduled on their team for the, like, the current snapshot in time, like how, how, many is on their, how many on their plate, what's the size of it, and then you can switch them you can switch the milestones here to see, mm -hmm. hey, is, um, if they're overloading this milestone or not. I think we should be using this more and more. Um, mm -hmm. We've been in reactive mode for a while and um, I'd love to see us do more planning in this regard. These are examples of um, uh, boards that I've set up. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, one question. The previous board that you showed, are we pulling the data from any other board that the, the development team is using? Because I'm assuming all the quality resources are embedded part of a different team. That's correct. That's, okay. that's, very, that's a very really good uh, question. So this board is at the group level. So it's the same issue. So one issue can appear in many boards depending mm. on what label you specify. So yeah. it could be a good, a good uh, yeah, like Dan is working on quality work for configure and orchestration. So it's clear off the bat. Um, yeah. What, what, what team or which group is being. Yeah, so, uh, it's one, so it's one vision board for anyone to look at. Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Yes. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is also captured in the board for group orchestration yeah. um, because they, they, they do pull issues from DevOps configure and, and orchestration. Okay. Uh, these are examples of how you can configure a board. So uh, this, this board is for the de de development work. So assignees, so you can put assignees on them. These are just mm -hmm. examples. Prioritization, so you can put P1 to P4s and then you can like what goes in first, sorry, uh, priorities, yes. And then scheduling, you can put milestones on them. So like when you, as a manager, you can configure, hey, I, I wanna, this is my grooming board and backlog grooming board. You can configure, hey, this column is a, back, is a backlog and then um, uh, which issues go into what. And then you can also filter by, by people as well. So you can have, um, it's free form, which is like, this is why the board in GitLab is so far powerful and not locked in into a certain flow. So the top, Role you can configure people, label, and milestones, and then um, you can visualize it pretty pretty easily there. Is there a way for me to create my own board where yes. I have my own? Oh, yes. If, even now, you can create yeah. your own board. Yeah. So um, uh, the way you can create it is if you can go to this, and then you can go click and create a new mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. um, name it whatever you like. So let's just try it out here. Um, quality. Uh, both we um, expand this so I will say any milestone for now and then create the board um, yeah that's there aren't any issues with yeah quality well let's see this um, edit the board so milestone labels okay we forgot to add this so mm. let's see quality mm. and then growth Develop skills. Oh, we do have some. There you go. And do it test coverage for customers. Um, test plan for. Oh, so now I was on it already. Okay. I think he, he he wrote the test plan for this a while back. So this is uh, okay. this is perfect. Um, you can you can yes. expand on this. Um, yep. Once awesome. you have it. All this stuff yep. Great. Thank you. Um, how to use the board. So this is, this is me taking your documentation a bit far. So like I, this is the mermaid chart for that. 
so it can see which environments go into which which group and then which project falls into what and then like that's the top level um, department scheduling um, and prioritization yeah. that, like that can happen here I think these boards are still current so um, though I, I have found that um, it can be quite messy here so I, I suggest that the managers actually track it at their level because mm -hmm. looking at it at a um, uh, balance growth. Hmm. Uh, quick question though. Um, this hmm. is under gitlab.org, but customer portal, is that as a separate a project in itself or is that also within here itself? I believe that that's a great question. There you go. It's you can configure it at the top level, but you mm. see this, it's pulling from customers.gilab.com, which is oh, yeah. your project. So yeah. I suggest you have both levels because you may want to know if your team is contributing to another project and if mm. they have the growth team and quality, um, you will be aware of it. Uh, and then you can have, if you want another board just for that project and only like you, you, you can only put the backlog grooming board there and the prioritization board there. So you groom it at that level, but then mm -hmm. it flows up to the top level and you can visualize what's going on in each milestone and all that stuff. Yep. So very powerful, very flexible. Yeah, awesome. Uh, board link, so everything is here. Um, top level board, priority scheduling um, and all that. I think somebody updated my top level board. I'm gonna go try to find dev team. Hmm. Oh, I think Ramya took over. Um, okay, so it looks like I need to update this link. Yeah, Ramya took over this board already. I need to update the link here. But uh, this is her team's board, looks like. You can see there's a fakey test for, for her team. Mm. Um, uh, she was just checking fakey test and test pilot, and this is the, the, um, the, mm -hmm. the things that her team are working on. Awesome. Uh, that's it for project management. Awesome. It's good. This is a very good high level insight into what different projects we have. Great. Awesome. Time. Uh, moving to roadmap. So I've used Rally, I've used version one, I've used Jira, I've used so many things. <laughs> and <laughs> it could be a, um, a tool uh, paralysis at, 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 some, at some certain, certain times. So, at GitLab, I try to make it as clean as we can. We have a page for the roadmap, which we should update every quarter. Um, uh, we haven't been updating this quarter yet, so that's something that we should look into um, with feedback from other engineering managers. The way I define this is um, we have five tracks. Um, I'm actually looking to collapse this into four because um, I think releases and coverage is kind of the same thing. But an overview of this, uh, coverage track is work to improve the overall coverage. Most of the stuff will be under here. Uh, the, and you can see it, so many, so many um, things that we could do, ideas that we haven't done yet. The one that doesn't have links, hot links are, we don't have a, we should have an epic, but we don't have an issue to track it yet. As you scroll down, um, efficiency track, so work to increase efficiency and productivity. Um, so, um, Fault tolerance, this is like framework improvements and pipeline improvements, so faster execution, making the test pyramid lean, and this is why I, I need extra eyes. I think this could probably be removed um, and put it in coverage track, because like that's grooming the coverage. Test data, probably there as well. Um, this is where, at my last company, it was, uh, it was really nice. We had a newspaper format that gets sent out every two weeks, and hey, QA user five is now renamed to QA user seven with these five projects. So if mm -hmm. you want to change your test coverage, make sure you update these users. And we just maintain the whole test data model. And it's the same across all environments, production, staging. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then like, and it's the same with the unit test as well. So like when you update the test data model, it propagates everywhere. The test gets changed and boom, you run tests in production, everything's green. So that's, that's, awesome. where, that's where I come from. And uh, I, I think we should be doing some of that here as well. Mm -hmm. Test results, test readability, the triage track. Um, this should probably go into efficiency. I think that's where I'll, I'll put it um, because this is making sure we, we triage um, things that come in. Um, we have bots that auto triage things and then um, measure track is metrics and then release track is um, uh, 
um, validating the release process. Now, we have epics in GitLab. So mm -hmm. this is a kicker. All of these five tracks is an epic in GitLab. So if you click on the quality engineering roadmap high level link, it takes you to this grandfather epic. Mm -hmm. And these maps directly to every track in the roadmap. So if you expand this, these are essentially everything in the project that we have scheduled our engineers have ideas for or something that's being in being scheduled. So you can actually see what's the status at the really high level view, what's in backlog, what's scheduling in, in what what milestone and whatnot. And if you expand all these, it actually goes down to the issue level. So you can see the progress. Um, um, uh, improve endpoint coverage, I think we're like halfway done. And once things get closed out, everything gets updated reflected at this top level view. So this is a single source of truth. For sorry, so sorry, so epics need not live within a project. Epics can be outside a project. Yes, epics are at the group level only. At the group level. Okay. The one step after epics, sorry, what is that called again? Uh so we have epics and issues. Issues. Epic that's the only two levels we have, epics and issues. That is it. Epics and issues. But epics can be a parent of another. Another so, epic. Yes. So we call mm -hmm. them, a, there's an epic and there's a parent epic for that epic. Okay. So we call them parent epic. Yes. It and is. Okay. this is where things will get confusing because other teams, they have a limited levels. And I am drawing the line where you can only have one parent epic, which is these five tracks. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're adding an epic, to a parent, it should fall in one of these five tracks. And any epic you add here shouldn't contain any other downstream epics. It should only be issues. So ensuring that the structure is flattened and you don't get an unlimited nested um, structure. We have been in that mess before where, hey, there's an epic with two issues, which contains also an epic with five issues, and then an epic there with one issue, and, and it was really messy, really confusing. We cleaned it up um, quite a bit last year, and it's it's a it's more readable now, but um, you could use some more some more um, improvements. One thing that we have in Jira is you have initiatives. That's like your main oh, high level goal. I, I know. <laughs> and then you have epics, and then you have stories or tasks. However, we want to do it. Yeah. Is there a reason why we haven't thought about those three layers? Because we're see, we're actually honestly using three levels here. Yeah. So GitLab product direction. I I think. Uh, Jira has its own um, bane as well. I think it's too rigid mm -hmm. because you have to use initiatives where sometimes I just need an, ish, an, an epic with five issues and you're mm -hmm. done with it. Uh, as you use GitLab more, you will see the power of simplicity and flexibility because you can, you can fit it any way you want to fit your own workflow. Um, not to bash on any of our competitors. Mm -hmm. I've been in Jira Jira Forest or Jira Confusion before where to get a project set up and to draw the lines like I this this workflow is this it state can be a little bit too complicated. I agree there. But I'm right. just a bit maybe I would get used to it, but epic within an epic kind of it sounds a little bit confusing to me, but eventually it would get easier. I'm it's it's a parent epic. It is why I want to limit down to the uh, so mm. we have only four epics. The first one is the the grandfather epic. Mm-hmm. The second one is the parent epic, which is the, the roadmap tracks. Okay. And you have the normal epics, which is like work within two or three milestones. And you have issues. That's mm -hmm. it. Like, there's no more. Okay. <laughs> we will have a this conversation again, probably. <laughs> uh, uh, I would recommend looking at the, the product direction page because there's a lot of use cases they are defined and where the product is taking its direction. Um, this has taken us where we're here. Uh, it's taken to where, where we are. So um, I think it's working and people love it. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Uh, another cool thing I wanted to show, not being looked at by a lot of managers right now, there's a roadmap view. And this is why you see the nested epics really powerful that you can render the time 
the time on the issues directly here. The numbers doesn't roll up yet. But the cool thing is you can just go into an epic. I'm going to the cover track epic now. You can move up to the ancestor. So this mm -hmm. is almost like a built-in folder structure. You can just traverse it. Once you grab onto one of our epics, you can just go anywhere in the tree. Like, no. And this view is live everywhere. So you can see where the progress are. As long as your team is scheduling milestones, mm -hmm. you can plan ahead. You can have unlimited uh, insights on how you want to structure this. Awesome. And the dates roll up from the issue level up to the top current epic. Our OKRs, do they get rolled into these five no. parent epic? No, they don't. Not yet. Not yet. Um, okay. It should be. It should be. Yeah. It should be. It, okay. it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be um, like an epic format or, or whatnot, uh, but there should be some representation of it inside our, our roadmap views. That's our a roadmap. great question. Yeah. And once we're talking about OKRs, it's a bit. I don't want to say disconnected, but it's tracking two places right now. One is in the OKRs are being tracked at this level, which is under GitLab.com. Mm. And there mm. are no epics here to track. It's only issues at the engineering management level. So these are just like one issue describing okay. the OKR. Um, what we've done in the past is we have um, issues that are uh, created in GitLab.org. So that's where this is the high level management tracking roll up to the company page. And this is the issues that are actually in our boards and where mm -hmm. you can link to roadmap. So um, it's almost like there's, you need the you need to work doing here. There's a dotted line to the GitLab.com project, like the OKRs. And like, you can actually, there's a, there's a missing box here where like there are no epics or there's no, there's no place to drop them into the coverage track. It's a lot of um, paperwork for now. So I haven't been strict on telling people to, to hey, make sure you create paperwork for this. So, um, but as we scale, I think making it clear and even pulling in process automation, like have it just be automatically added or, or updated, that, that's gonna help a lot. Oh, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Um, any questions? Mm, I think so far so good, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, that's it for the roadmap. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay. So uh, how far are we in? We are at, um, I think, okay. I think I'm just going to stop the recording and mm -hmm. then we'll add this to our handbook. So. Yep. Um, Definitely.